Okay, hi guys and welcome to today's show. Today, a very special video indeed. We will be reviewing the most iconic German watch of all time, undoubtedly uh, the most influential design of all time uh, when it comes to German watches. And that is, of course, the Max Bill watch by Junghans. Uh, first of all, well, I've got to do a quick wristwatch check and I am indeed wearing my little uh, retro Casio, the uh, the steel, it has a steel bracelet and then a, uh, a kind of plastic, uh, metallic coated, I guess, um, case to the watch. Absolutely adore this watch. Unbelievably comfortable, uh, takes me instantly back to my childhood and just makes me smile. So that's what it's all about, right? Also, before we get into this, I've got to thank my good friend Arthur for lending his Max Bill watch in for review. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do it without you, so a massive thank you once again to my good friend for being so gracious and making it all possible. So without further ado, let's change perspectives and get into today's review. Today I'm finally getting to review a Max Bill watch from Young Hands. Now Young Hands, if you're unfamiliar with the brand or the channel, Young Hands is Germany's largest uh, watch company, founded all the way back in 1861 by Earnhardt Young Hands. They are based in Baden Württemberg in the Schramberg part of Germany. And the Max Bill in particular is probably uh, their most iconic watch or most well known watch. Uh, although Young Hands have some absolutely stunning pieces which I have uh, reviewed before. I'll, I'll leave a link somewhere on the page. Actually at the top there'll be a card and you can check out the Chronoscope Telemeister which is just incredible. Anyway, the Max Bill is something completely different. And who is Max Bill? Well, Max Bill is probably one of the most important Bauhaus artists acknowledged as a universal genius. He, he was a bit of a polymath, a bit of a Renaissance man. He was a Swiss architect, uh, an artist, a painter, a typeface designer, industrial designer, and a graphic designer. And he famously took up studies at the Bauhaus itself in uh, Dessau, which is the epicenter of the Bauhaus movement. Uh, and many of his teachers, including uh, Vasil Kadinsky, who's one of my personal favorites, Paul Klee, uh, Oscar Schlemmer, um, and this was from 1927 to 1929. Then he moved to Zurich and uh, started really uh, an incredible career. Max Bill was widely considered the single most decisive influence on Swiss graphic design uh, beginning in the 1950s with his theoretical writing and his progressive work. His connection to the days of the modern Bauhaus movement gave him a special authority and his work exemplifies perfectly the clarity of design and the precise proportions that is so uh, instantly recognizable as Bauhaus and is so beautifully uh, characterized in his work. Max Bill officially started his relationship with uh, Junghans back in 1961 uh, in the heyday really of, of his career and he started uh, designing watches uh, for Junghans but not only uh, watches he did clocks as well and they've all become design icons a really important part of not only design but horology as well and it's probably one of the best examples of an artist directly collaborating with a watch brand to make something that's completely unique and and very recognizable, um, not only as Bauhaus, but also as Max Bill's work. At the time of working with Young Hands, Bill was a professor. He was also teaching uh, from about the late 60s into the 70s. Max Bill passed away in 1994 and left behind an incredible uh, legacy and amount of work uh, spanning from buildings to modern sculpture uh, and pretty much <laughs> anything you can imagine. And there's no doubt that uh, the Young Hands watches and clocks is part of that legacy and is just a, a fantastic example of his work manifested in a watch. So this is the Max Bill we're looking at today and they come in a variation of dials, uh, complications, but pretty much um, they are all instantly recognizable because of their minimalist, typical Bauhaus styling 
Um, Bauhaus is a is a movement that kind of did away with os- over ostentatious um, design that, and was quite striking at the time. You got to remember, you know, the, the, the Art Deco and Art Nouveau and all the rest of it were very ornate. Um, very involved and Bauhaus really did away with all of that. It stripped it down to its purest essence of form and function. Max Bill is probably one of the most well-known uh, of the uh, Walter Gruppius group and he really understood, intuitively understood, how to apply the pursuit of constructive clarity and precision and proportions to his work. So the model we're looking at today, uh, this is the reference zero two seven three four zero one dot zero zero and this is the max bill automatic and it comes in this very striking gray anthracite dial which is basically has a kind of sub metallic luster to it very crisp numerals matching the um, the strap it comes in it's beautiful calf skin uh, genuine leather really has a kind of soft uh, supple texture to it. So let's get dimensions out the way first. Now the watch itself is a really nice light uh, 44 grams. The diameter is 38 millimeters. We got a thickness of just under 12, so very nice and slender, perfect for a dress watch. Lug to lug we're looking at 39 millimeters. Lug width we're looking at 20 millimeters. So a really nice size and probably the best size for a dress watch in my opinion because uh, I think 40 is is definitely a crowd pleaser but 38 looks just a little bit more um, sophisticated a little bit smaller and just fits so many wrists so the case itself is entirely stainless steel uh, it has this kind of beautiful ufo shape with this lovely domed uh, curvex hard plexiglass uh, crystal it has a citrulline coating which is something um, uh, young hands do on a lot of their watches it's splash resistant uh, which basically means you know <laughs> it's it's not very water resistant but it's a dress watch so that's excusable and has a stainless steel buckle unsigned as is the crown very very minimalist and this is kind of in keeping with that Bauhaus aesthetic on the back we have screw down case back and as you can see it's entirely high polished signed max bill with his signature it's very difficult to, it's so reflective and there you can see stainless steel young hands germany this of course is made in germany as it says on the bottom of the dial you can just see under the six o'clock now the numerals are this lovely kind of uh, light brown a tan color that matches the strap. Now there's no date on this piece, uh, which it keeps it entirely symmetrical. The only thing breaking the symmetry is the crown at three o'clock. And I think, you know, for, for a dress watch, I think that's actually, um, it makes sense, but also aesthetically, uh, it's in keeping with the design of the watch. The hour and minute hand do have Luminova, Super Luminova, which is, um, I must stress, is uh, made with some kind of environmentally friendly uh, luminous substance. And I'll include a loom shot. It's not the most incredible, but uh, again, this is a dress watch. We're, we're not expecting to go diving with this or anything. So, um, but it does have a little bit of loom. Second hand, if we just, if we just angle it, it's very subtly curved at the end. And I love how it, um, touches or reaches the smaller indices uh, on the edge of the dial. Beautiful, beautiful minimalist hands. So it's signed automatic with young hands uh, just under the 12 o'clock, very minimal. Uh, there's nothing that doesn't need to be there is, is there. It's again in keeping with that ideology um, of Bauhaus. So inside we have the ETA 2824-2, uh, which we've seen a thousand times before. A 38 hour power reserve that operates at 28,800 vibrations an hour. It's a 25 joule movement. So if we pull out the crown all the way, it's hackable. Uh, we also have manual wind. Now the lugs, uh, very, very 60s, typical lugs. I mean, it's similar to the, my Timex of that era as well, but definitely in keeping with the 60s designs, undoubtedly. So let's pop it on the wrist and see how it wears. So there we are. And as you can see on my tiny little wrist, it fits beautifully. 
Um, it's incredibly comfortable, very, very solid feeling as well. Because it's not that tall, the lugs that point at an angle really do kind of dictate the way the leather band hugs the wrist. Uh, very, very comfortable. As a dress watch, it would be absolutely perfect if the cuff of your sleeve just uh, touches the watch. Because of that curvature, it just slides over beautifully. You couldn't design a better proportions for a dress watch. Very, very elegant. I love the gray. I love the, the contrast between the numerals and the gray and that slight pop of reflection uh, with the minute track running around the outside. Just really nice touch. Uh, and it looks very sophisticated. It definitely has a class of its own and I can certainly see why uh, it's a design classic. So let's take it back to the studio and summarize the watch. Let's discuss its positives and negatives. Positives first, well undoubtedly that made in Germany quality is there. The finishing, everything is just perfect. It's what you'd expect from young hands and what you'd expect from uh, a German watchmaker. Secondly, it's a true icon. Now my good friend Arthur who's lent this in is actually considering selling this and getting a Nomos. Now, Nomos are beautiful watches with uh, lovely in-house uh, decorated movements. Gorgeous, I love them. You know I love them, I've reviewed them. However, this is the true icon and there's no denying that without the Max Bill watches, there wouldn't be Nomos. Uh, the Max Bill paved the way with its Bauhaus design. It's been imitated so many times, even to this day with fashion watches. There wouldn't be... <laughs> You cannot deny the influence and importance of this timepiece. This is an icon. It's a timeless design and I actually would take this over the Nomos. I know the Nomos is superior, luxury watch, blah blah blah, all the rest of it and the movement, but this goes on to my next point, the movement. Now, yes, it's a bog standard ETA. However, I, my suspicion is that Young Hands have regulated it because it's performing at plus three seconds a day, which is impeccable. Its utilitarian um, lack of decoration is more in keeping with the ideology and principles of Bauhaus and certainly fits the watch. This is a, a, a rare occasion where usually I, I complain about the ETA, I say, oh, it needs more decoration, it should be a more prestigious movement, blah, 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 all the rest of it. But actually, this is the one exception where the more utilitarian, less decoration, the simpler uh, the movement is, the better, because it is in keeping with the ideology of Bauhaus, and that's what it's all about. Okay, my third major positive of the Max Bill uh, watch is, what does it mean when a person wears this watch? Uh, who chooses to wear this watch? I am immediately reminded of my one of my best friends uh, back in London who I went to art school with, and I hope you're watching this, but don't worry, it's a, it's a big compliment. He's a writer for, and works in advertising. I went into music, he went into advertising after art school. He's incredibly successful, incredibly talented, and he wears a Max Bill chronograph. It's a choice of somebody cultured, who knows about design, who's sophisticated. It's not about status, it's not about luxury, it's about the design, it's about the aesthetic. That watch suits him perfectly because he's all of those things, trust me, he's all of those things. And somebody as cultured and intelligent and talented like him, the watch fits him perfectly. And that's, I think, what the watch has that many watches, even watches twenty, thirty thousand dollars do not have. They do not have this rich of a legacy of, of, of design, um, of, of importance, of influence. I mean, even prestigious companies like Gigi Le Coultre, the watchmaker's watchmaker, even they have been inspired by the Max Bill watches. There's no denying it, it's, it's inspired so many dress watches since the early 60s. And it's ironic how when it first was released, it wasn't really a big success. It took a while for the world to catch up, to, to kind of realize, wow, this is a, a design classic. This is an icon. So for me, the watch is indicative of sophistication, of uh, appreciation of art and culture, and that, adds an extra level of sophistication to the wearer and very few watches do that. Okay, my fourth positive of this watch is that definitely this to me is the pick of the bunch. I think the lack of complications is even more in keeping with Bauhaus design. The fact that it's so symmetrical without the date, without uh, the chronograph. I think also the grey dial is something a little bit more unique. The fact it has the numerals to me 
uh, is even more special because it has that uh, very famous four. If you really look at it, it has that curved four. It's a hallmark of uh, Max Bill's design and very unique and special to him. So I really like that touch. It's a very subtle detail, but I actually picked this one over the one with just batons or, or, or lines for the for the uh, hour markers. Okay, so what are the negatives of this watch? Well, to me, I really struggled with this because I can't really find anything to fault with it. I think the price is the only true negative. It retails at about just shy of a thousand dollars. Yes, you are paying for the Max Bill Heritage, which I think is worth something definitely, but a thousand dollars, I think it is a bit too expensive. Having said that, Arthur paid $650 I think at watch buyers during a sale. I think that's the perfect price. However, you can find them significantly cheaper on the used market. You can get the manual wind for around about three, four hundred dollars, which I think is a bargain. But anyway, an outstanding watch. Uh, if you've ever considered one, go for it. It's a classy, classy watch. And I mean, do I have to say it is pure class. Okay guys, I'm gonna leave it there uh, before I rabbit on too much. Uh, please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, opinions, questions, all the rest of it down below in the comments. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.